caught four the other night on a tennis court about 10 p.m. under very bright lights. What I did here is I put them in their setups. Uh, this is something we're trying out that's new. It's an alternative to test tubes. So now that we've got our queens inside, we're going to put them on a heating cable. You're probably not going to see a lot of activity from them. These are a much calmer species apparently than many queens. A lot of them would be freaking out, kind of running around. They would not like the light. When we've plugged the heating cable in, it takes a little while for it to heat up. It starts heating up from here when you plug it in and then the heat slowly makes its way down. And then I, th I believe it's maybe the last three or four feet do not get hot. You have a good seven or eight feet maybe of this cable to heat multiple colonies. And I'll show you how I've got some more set up here in a minute for test tubes. But this is just one way. Um, putting a towel underneath is not necessary. You want to heat the opposite side of the dish to start out with. So we're going to do that with each one. Okay, so now the reason we did that, you are giving them this portion of, of the dish is going to be the hotter portion. It will heat the whole thing because they're pretty small. But what you want to do is start paying attention the next day and seeing if the queen has moved herself closer to that side or farther away. If they've moved closer, like this queen, say tomorrow you came up and you saw that this queen was as close to the heat source as she could, you would go ahead and inch it a little bit further. And then the next day, maybe she's still in the same spot, you go ahead and move it a little bit closer until she's directly on top of the heat. Then she may decide to move a little bit away and then you can kind of adjust it back a little bit. So you're giving her an optimal chance to heat. You have to be a little bit interactive with her and pay attention. Something else to consider when you're doing this is the fluctuation of the temperature within your own house. Um, my house, some days I'll forget to turn the heat off and I'll realize midday, um, you know, it's, the temperature's about up to 76 degrees. And then some other days I, I leave the air conditioner on, it's down at 68. So obviously if you're giving her a bit of a boost as far as temperature goes, I'm doing this right now and it's about 70 degrees. So six degree difference is going to be considerable. So you need to keep that stuff in mind when you're fluctuating the heat. This is a general setup for heating test tubes. And this is the same idea. You're putting just the wire is underneath. You can see that these queens have chosen to have their brood in a warm spot. They could be down here, farther down where the cotton is, and that would be fine. But see, this is something you can do to test where they really want them. Just move them down. If they want them closer to the heat, they'll move them. Um, and that's not a bad way to go anyway, because again, like I said, the fluctuations within your house may heat that up and then they only have maybe an inch or two to move away. That may end up being too hot for them. So again, you know, it's just kind of you being interactive with your ants. There's definitely different ways to heat colonies. You can have just a heated room that you keep the same temperature could have your own heating setup, an incubator. Very expensive, but another route that I've seen people take that works well. You could do a heating pad. Um, I just like the heating cables because of the flexibility that you've got with them. So a little bit about the condensation. Um, you're going to have to deal with that. Test tubes, condensation is a killer. You do not want to see condensation in your test tubes. This is okay because there's substrate inside this container here. And should that condensation seep down to the side and down to the bottom, it will soak in. Not going to be harmful to your ant. That's actually a good thing. However, 
if you've got just a glass container or a glass test tube and you see condensation forming the reason that's happening is because the temperature is changing rapidly either inside the test tube which is unlikely but more likely it's changing too quickly inside of the the room that you're in and you need to uh, adjust that really quickly or you're going to end up with uh, some drowning ants but she knows that this larvae will grow faster up by the heat and that's where she's putting it um, so th you know again the heating cable is very good for having a lot of flexibility as far as being able to heat very specific areas of a test tube or a container but not the whole thing and it gives you a long length you can heat multiple setups you know as you can see this this room here has got a whole bunch of them the 18 young colonies and queens being heated by one cable make sure that when you add heat to keep a closer eye on them at first get into a new routine for how much water is evaporating out of your container because it will probably increase the good thing again is that the condensation will kind of be like a little giveaway this is a Campanotus Nearcticus queen you can see she's got uh, eggs in various stages but she's got three pupae she's not real happy with me being this close very protective queen these pupae will be closing here in a few weeks so What's, what's a good thing about that for the queen is and she can relax and she can put herself where she's comfortable with the heat and then the workers will be the tenders they will put the eggs the pupae and the larvae in different spots according to what stage of development they're in that's why giving them this direct heat source on one spot to me is preferable over having say a whole room that is heated up to say 80 degrees you know you're not going to know if if they want it higher or lower but uh with this heat cable you can see them moving them around positioning them that's what she's doing right now she wants them exactly in the optimal position and she'll keep moving them around until she's happy with it you know when the workers show up they help her it doesn't mean you want to stop heating them because the colonies reach a certain stage uh, the heat is something you want to do on a continuous basis. Um, now, not necessarily when they enter a state of diapause, when the colony slows down into kind of a resting mode during the winter time. That's when you want to take your heat source away and you actually consider cooling them uh, to allow them to to rest like they would naturally in the wild. Mm -hmm.